On this example, we're going to use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of this function y equals x to the x to the third power. Uh, it's going to be pretty similar if you had an x squared up in the exponent, something similar to that. Um, we'll walk through every step of this, but as a quick side note, if you were to have a problem that looks something like this, like x to the x raised to the x, maybe raised to another x up here, that is equivalent to what we have going on in our given example, how it's written. And why that is, is because of our rules for combining exponents together. If I start out with x to the x and I work on combining the blue x and the red x together, how that's going to work is you would combine these using a multiplication, right, for our exponents. And then what you could do is you could say x to the x power, and then the blue x times the red x, that's two copies of x multiplied together. So what I'm going to go ahead and say is two copies of x multiplied together is the same thing as x squared. And then from there, we could do this one more time in our example. We could say x to the x power, and then to combine that x as the exponent and the x squared, again, you would do a multiplication in this case. And by my count, that's three copies of x multiplied together up in our exponent. Um, you can't do it one more time because it would no longer be in the exponent. So if you're given either one of these, um, it's kind of saying the same thing. I'm going with the version we have on the left-hand side as we work through this problem. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and point out in this is because our x is up in the exponent, we're going to go ahead and offer a restriction to our domain saying that we can only use x values greater than zero. The reason being this is an exponential function with our variable up in the exponent. So we don't want to plug in zero. We really don't want to plug in any negative values. Um, and I've gone ahead and I've graphed the um, graph of y equals x raised to the x to the third power over on the right hand side. So you can kind of get a view of what that looks like. After we take this derivative, then we're going to determine when the function will have a horizontal tangent line. And from the graph, you may be able to kind of pick out, it looks like it's happening right about here. If we try to draw a horizontal line going across there, looks like it's tangent to the graph right around there. Uh, I don't know, somewhere between zero and one, somewhere in the, I don't know, 0 0.7 range. But we'll get an exact answer as well as uh, an approximation when we finish this one up. So let's jump into this problem. What we're gonna do, <clears throat> is this is troubling that we have x both as the base and up in the exponent. So what I'm going to offer is let's um, begin by utilizing a natural log on both sides. All right, so we're going to go ahead and apply a natural log to both sides. And the reason for this is when we get a natural log involved, we're allowed the rules that go along with logarithmic functions, specifically the one that says we're allowed to bring the exponent down in front and make it a multiple. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the third power over on the right hand side multiplied by the natural log of our base x is still equal to the natural log of y over on the left hand side. At this point we now have kind of two functions multiplied together on the right hand side. We can start using our implicit differentiation and to do so let's map out our plan. We have a multiplication going on the right side, so that's going to mean the product rule. So I'm going to think of this first function, x cubed, as the function f, and the natural log as being g. All right, so the plan is going to be product rule says f prime times g plus f times g prime. So systematically, just kind of going through, trying to take this derivative. First, let's start on the left-hand side. We have the natural log of y. Its derivative is going to be 1 over y, but we're differentiating with respect to x, so we could either put a dy dx on this side or a y prime. I'm using the prime notation for this example. All right, on the right-hand side, now we can jump into that product rule. First thing we want to do is we want to take the derivative of x cubed. So the derivative there is going to be, using the power rule, 3 x to the second power, right? bring the exponent down, reduce by 1. And next to that, we're just going to multiply by g, which is the natural log of x, plus, now we copy down f, 
which was x to the third power. And we're going to multiply that by the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. And because x was our variable there, we don't need a y prime next to it. Only when you have y as your variable and you're differentiating. Well, what about simplifying this down a little bit? All right, so things we can do, trying to get y prime on one side by itself, one thing I'll do is go ahead and multiply both sides to eliminate the y from that side. All right, so this will isolate the y prime on one side, leaving us with y times 3x squared times the natural log of x plus we can do a little bit of simplifying down. We have x cubed multiplied by 1 over x. So that's like three copies of x in the numerator and one copy of x in the denominator. That'll simplify to an x squared. All right, so technically that's our derivative, okay? Um, but we do have x's and y's over on the right-hand side. What I'm going to suggest is let's go ahead and try to replace this y that's out in front and make it all in terms of x's. All right, so to do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to how we defined y from the beginning, and I'm going to replace y with x raised to the x to the third power. So where y was, we're going to put x raised to x to the third power out in front. And this way, it's all going to be in terms of y over uh, of x over on the right-hand side. The next thing we can do is, as we're thinking about maybe simplifying a little bit, is I notice that we have a common factor of x squared and x squared between these two terms. We can go ahead and factor that common factor out. So this will be multiplied by x squared. And then as we remove those, we're going to be left with 3 natural log of x plus 1 on the inside of our set of parentheses. Now you could do a little bit more simplifying down, um, say with the bases out being x and the, the first two multiples out there. Um, we could simplify that further, but I'm not going to worry about that. So there's our derivative using implicit differentiation. The next thing is we want to figure out when do we have a horizontal tangent line. All right, so the horizontal tangent line is going to occur whenever the slope of that tangent line is zero, or that means the same thing as saying, when is our derivative equal to zero? Well, in our case, remember our restriction we put on our values of x. We said x has to be greater than zero because our original function was exponential. So that means that our x raised to the x to the third power, that can't equal zero. So I'm not worried about this. The x squared can't equals zero. So really what we're left with is, because we already factored it, figuring out when is this factor, 3 times the natural log of x plus 1, equal to zero. Zero product property we're using in this case. All right, the solving down shouldn't be too bad. First I'm going to subtract the 1. So 3 natural log of x is going to be equal to negative 1. Next, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. All right, the purpose being kind of isolating that natural log of x, trying to solve for it. So now we get to the point where we have natural log of x equals negative 1 third power, or sorry, negative 1 third. And now, because the natural log is on one side by itself, we can either think about switching this over to exponential form using the formula, uh, the definition of logarithmic function, or because the natural log has a base of e, what I like to do is visualize this as moving that natural log up to the exponent and using strategically e as the base on both sides. The reason being, on the left hand side, when you compose together a natural log and e to a power, you get this nice canceling out. Those are inverse functions. You get x all by itself. Then you have e to the negative one third power which is technically our answer. If you wanted to see that without the negative exponent, we would go 1 over e to the positive 1 third power, or equivalently that could be thought of as 1 over the cube root of e to the first power. If we get our calculators out, put this into our calculator, you'll notice that we get approximately 0.7165. And this continues going dot 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 afterwards. All right, which kind of 
matches up with what we said on our graph up here. All right, we said that horizontal tangent line was going to be right about 0.7 from the beginning, just visualizing it on the graph. So that's pretty much how you do these problems. Same technique would work if you started out and you had x raised to, say, x to the second power or x raised to x to the fourth power. Pretty similar as far as all the steps involved in getting there. So I hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working on implicit differentiation.